President Duarte. Duarte. Yes, I'm still president. No, no, I'm not having a party. I don't care what it sounds like. Listen, listen to me. I think there may be gorillas here in the palace. No, the other kind. Yes, I think my life may be in danger. It's not funny! Listen to me, listen! Assemble some Guarantia Nacional. Have them come up to the palace at once. Yes. National Guard, what's the matter with you? Don't you speak my language? Yes. Just make sure they're on my side. Pedro, come on. Oh, what a pleasure. Alberto, Alberto, has anyone seen my Alberto? I'm, I'm starving and you're worried about shampoo? I'm talking about my husband. Do not worry, Maria. Alberto will be back. You know his sense of direction. All right, all right. I'm not lost. I'm definitely, positively not lost. I know right where I am. I'm right here, all by myself, all alone, not lost. Oh, I'm not afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. I'm all alone, by myself, not lost. <laughs> and now, there's a huge cylindrical object glowing in the sky. I can handle it! I can handle it! Hey, drop me off at the next corner. Good morning. What is so good about it? Here, try to eat something. It's no good. I need more red on your... Uh, uh, it's no good. 
Miss Alberto. No, we... no, I'm afraid something has happened to her. Maria, no. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, oh I just pray to God that he is all right. Maria, Maria. I'm going to kill him. Maria, something has happened. Alberto, where have you been? I almost called the Guardia Nacional. <gasps> no, listen to me. Last night, the, a giant ship with flashing lights. It, it flew right over me. They, they tried to communicate. Who? Who? I don't know who. This thing, this, this, this ship, it was a dazzling ball of light that burned with the fire of a thousand sunsets. I am married to Rod McEwen. <laughs> Listen to me. I don't know who they are. I don't know where they come from. All I know is they, they tried to help us. Alberto, have you been eating the mushrooms again? <laughs> Maria, you must believe me. I do believe you, Alberto. Look, please, come, sit, <laughs> eat something. Maybe this will wear off. They tried to, they tried to help us. Oh, Here, there's not much left. <laughs> Mrs. Santiago is dead. There was nothing they could do. I am sorry to hear that. And who'll be next? Who'll be the next to die? I'll go. <laughs> How much longer must we wait for someone to help? You sure ask a lot of questions. Guardia Nacional! Maria! Oh. Oh. Anybody home? Oh, American! Oh. Hi, uh, Jeff Boyle. From Playboy magazine. <laughs> we're, uh, we're doing a pictorial on the girls of El Salvador. <laughs> oh, you, you have been sent by God. Ah, you know, Hefner. We had nearly given up hope. We've been through so much. They tied me up. They beat me. Uh, yes, Sansa Gandia. Eh? <laughs> Will you help us see? Ah, no, that's okay. I'll just watch. <laughs> Alberto, we are saved. Stop playing with your food. I've seen this before. Of course you've seen it before, Alberto. It's all we've been eating for five months. No, no, this means something. Alberto, it means you will live for another day. Eat something. This song. This song, I know that song, but, but, but where? I saw the song in the sky. Last night, I saw the 10,000 lights in the sky. Oh, and I oh, oh, the lights of the Savior. He is blind, and yet he saw. Yes. It is a mirror. Oh, we are safe now. Our cries can be heard. Yes. Wow. Yours came out good. <laughs> I, took, I took a few lessons. That's it. The American. He will help us. Well, uh, anyway, they got this giant jacuzzi there, you know. And, uh, it's, for you. it's for you. It's for you. No, thanks. I don't need any souvenirs. Thanks. No, 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 no. You, you have been sent to help us. You must tell the people. Of our suffering. Si, si, tell them what the Guardia Nacional are doing. What are they doing? They're, they're killing communists. The, the Catholic Bishop of, of San Salvador, a communist? Oh. And the four American nuns? They were Mary No sisters. Are the Mary No sisters communists? Oh. We know you won't let us down. I know of a place where no harm can come to us, where we can be protected. But whom? Whom? I don't know whom. Somewhere up there, the lights in the sky. Yes, it is the Lord God. <laughs> yes. Come, go 
You must leave here. No, I'm going to uh, stick around. I, I got some thinking to do. Via con Dios. It's enough thinking for one day. <laughs> so? So where is this place? Are we there yet, Dad? I have to go to the bathroom. Do you see anything in here? <laughs> Look. They have come back for us. <laughs> we are Channel 83, Jamaica's cable superstation, presents your favorite island chef, that cat who makes you fat, Matt E. Dredd, the Rasta Gourmet. your rustic gourmet. And tonight we'll prepare a Rastafarian Mother's Day meal. Now before we begin to prepare the meal, first we must relax. <laughs> and how do I and I like to relax? <laughs> Watching TV? No, 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 no. no. Playing frisbee? No, 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 no. no. Give me gun time. Yeah. Magic fingers to my brain. <laughs> and now I'm ready to prepare stuffed birds I like Kingston. The first thing we'll need is a bird. But not just any bird. Is it chicken? No, no, no. Is it turkey? No, 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 no. Give me pigeon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me pigeon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you can't find this in your local supermarket. You know. But I and I was lucky enough to hit this with my moped. <laughs> As you can see, I've already plucked all the feathers off. It takes about four days, especially if you like to take lots of naps. <laughs> all right, you bind heads. First, we must coat the pigeon in a mixture of cottage cheese, 
cold milk and bacon bits, man. I love those bacon bits, man. <laughs> ah, it feels so nice, man. I like to rub it all over my best friend's teenage daughter. <laughs> And now we are ready to stuff the bird, you know what I mean? So, we can't use just any stuffing. Is it brown rice? No, 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 no! Is it red drums? No, no, no! Give me ganja! Some hot cats now, man. <laughs> hey, man, someone ripped out my ganja, man. My ratings go down the toilet. You know? I, I wonder who's going to do this when I catch the fella that does this sort of thing to me. I, I, and play a little joke on Nutty Dread. Now he must find a new job. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, now, shut up, you bald head. <laughs> All right, now, let me better stop putting a little stuffing in this bird here. Just a tiny piece of stuffing down and to make it feel so good now, you know, just a tiny bit now. All right, now, how do we cook this Rastafarian surprise? Do we bake it? No, 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 no. Shake and bake it? No, no, no. We smoke it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We smoke it. No. Up no more statues, man. <laughs> hey, this is Nutty Dread saying until next time, where there is smoke, there must be ganja! This is the Friday edition with your correspondent, Melanie Chardoff. Good evening. I'm Melanie Chardoff, and these are tonight's top stories. This week, Congress passed President Ronald Reagan's budget, which includes the largest cuts in our nation's history. For those of you who do not understand what this means, 252 United States congressmen whose meals, mailing privileges, health plans, and pensions are all subsidized by the federal government have just voted to cut off most of the aid to the poor, crippled, and unemployed. <laughs> Newspaper heiress Patricia Hearst Shaw is in good condition today after giving birth to her first child, an eight-pound baby girl. The girl was reportedly in excellent health after being held in captivity for over nine months. <laughs> The members of the Teamsters Union were stunned this week when their president, Frank Fitzsimmons, died of natural causes. <laughs> this week, the world was surprised by tennis pro Billie Jean King's admission of having had a lesbian relationship with her ex-secretary. In a related story, First Lady Nancy Reagan today admitted that she has been having a relationship with a thespian. <laughs> An anniversary this week. Exactly 125 years ago tomorrow, the word foreplay was first used. <laughs> and in addition to covering events on a national and international level, we at the Friday edition like to give an equal amount of attention to the little towns and communities that make up the heartland of this country. Perhaps the town best representative of normal America is Pitkinville, Montana. So here with the Pitkinville Report, let's welcome Rich Hall. Rich? Well, with 
With uh, springtime right around the corner, the town of Pitkinville, Montana, is gearing up for its annual tourist season again. And uh, though it doesn't have the glamour or excitement of New York or Paris, Pitkinville certainly has an amiable quality about itself that can't be found in many other towns. Watch. The town has always been known as uh, the little town with the big heart and big pigs. The kind of town where you can always find friendly people, clean streets, fresh air. But what most people don't know is that next to New York or Paris, Pitkinville may well be the entertainment capital of the Western Hemisphere. Take, for instance, the Pitkinville Playhouse with its famous revolving stage. Every year, thousands of tourists flock to these performances. This year, it's Our Town by Thornton Wilder. And the famous revolving stage offers theater lovers a view of the proceedings from every possible angle. Of course, the stage has been known to go out of control on occasion, but uh, engineers are hoping to work those bugs out real soon. Well, a leisurely evening can, al can always be spent hanging around that new water fountain just erected by the Department of Parks and Recreation. Those evenings that proved to be just a little too hot and uncomfortable, this is the perfect way to cool off. Well, for some reason, the kids in town always like to climb that big water tower on the outskirts of Pitkinville. Uh, the water department really doesn't mind. They don't really condone the activity. They just kind of look the other way, so to speak. But uh, just don't try to climb up there and paint anything on the tower because, as you can see, they have some pretty nasty tricks they can pull on you. And it's not always pretty. Well, the Pickenville Amusement Park is open again this season, and already the lines are forming to ride the infamous spin and barf machine. <laughs> the most terrifying ride ever invented. <laughs> Certainly not for the weak-hearted or the squeamish. Plenty of other things to do at the park, arcades, sideshows, and of course, any couple who's ever ridden through the enchanting tunnel of love knows it's an experience to be cherished forever. If you're looking for something a little more mainstream, the Pickenville Theater always has a couple of nice double features playing. This week it's Raging Pig and Bacon County Line. The screen is huge and the popcorn's fresh. And after the show, why not head down to the Pickenville Dance Hall and catch the new craze that's sweeping the nation, the bounce. Look at those youngsters go at it. Boy, I don't know about you, Melanie, but I get dance fever just watching these kids. Well, put it all together, it spells Fun City, USA. Uh, this has been the Pitkinville Report. I'm Rich Hall. See you later. Thank you, Rich. And finally tonight, this coming Sunday is Mother's Day. Now, I know that this holiday has been criticized by many as being over-commercialized and lacking in any real substance. But I'd like to take a moment to say a special thanks to my mom. Thanks, Mom. You raised me from being a little girl to, well, the woman I am today. Okay, so you yelled at me sometimes and you grounded me during the prom. <laughs> and, well, okay, you always undercooked the chicken a little bit and served it with its stringy bangs hanging out. And <laughs> you used to stay out all night drinking and you'd stumble in around dawn looking like a bag of dried up bones. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that you put me to work at age three so that you could pay for your bingo games. And <laughs> it's okay that you used to tie me up to the chair with satin straps and spread honey all over my arms to attract the bees. <laughs> None of this matters, Mom. Because it's Mother's Day, your day. I love you, Mom. I'm Melanie Chardoff. Good night. This has been the Friday edition with your correspondent, Melanie Chardoff. <laughs>
Hello, I'm Jim Adams, and welcome to another evening of Men Who Hug. My first guest tonight is a building contractor. He's a happily married father of three lovely young daughters. Will you welcome, please, Mr. Timothy Mumford? Tim, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Well, I, uh, I can tell from the way you hugged me that uh, you've been at it for quite some time, am I correct? Well, that's, that's right, Jim. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've been using hugging as a means of greeting men now for, oh, about seven years. Well, I could, I could tell you uh, didn't pat me on the back when we hugged. That's right. the huh. sign of someone who's comfortable with his embrace. Well, yes, that's right, Jim. Uh, see, a beginner will use the quick pat on the back technique to remind the other person that it's just a chummy hug, nothing at all sexual. Ah, now there's, there's the biggest bugaboo, if you will, isn't it, Tim? This getting over this fear of uh, appearing to be, or actually even being, homosexual. That's right, Jim. Uh, unfortunately, we do live in a society that makes homosexuality a burden that many of us aren't prepared to carry, and therefore we resist doing anything that might imply homosexuality. Such as hugging other men. Right, or even uh, sitting on another man's lap. <laughs> just, uh, they seem to agree it's just an act of friendship, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. Right. Now, how did you uh, begin the hugging thing, Tim? Well, that's a... I, uh... I, uh... I was at an airport, uh, a good friend of mine. I uh, was a fraternity friend, and uh, mm -hmm. instead of the fraternity handshake or what have you, I, I launched into a hug, and... Now, now, was he into hugging, too? Well, I have to say that he being wrapped up in my arms uh, sort of made him want to punch me out. <laughs> You know, it's, it's really a shame when you think about it that in our culture, any kind of physical contact uh, implies sexuality. Right, that's right. I mean, I, I, I watch your show all the time. I, I like you. I have a great deal of respect for your work. But mm -hmm. uh, the idea of holding you uh, naked, uh, frankly, that would make me want to puke. <laughs> well, well, you know, uh, what... What women see in men to begin with is frankly beyond me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, my next guests are... My next guests actually are co-owners of a brewery in Copley, New Jersey. Will you welcome, please, Bob Sturgis and Ken Schwartz. Right. Make them feel comfortable. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Men Who Hug. Gentlemen, I, uh, I notice, I, I notice a little, uh, kiss came along with your <laughs> hug. That's, that's wow. kind of an interesting addition. Here's your thought about yeah, that one. see, uh, how that came about is we went to Europe, see, and, uh, yeah. you know, it's, uh, it's one of them, uh, tour yeah. deals, you know. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. London's, yeah. London's great. Paris, <laughs> Thanks, you know? <laughs> but it seems, you know, it seems like the men hug a lot yeah. over there, and we think, what the hell? What are you, Let's give yeah. it a shot, huh? Yeah. Of course, uh, I didn't think a Paris stunk as much as Bob did. Ah, come here. on, Ken, come on, come on. Well, anyway. Tim, I, I, I guess you and I are just going to have to uh, get with it. I guess so. Well, I... wait a minute, hey, don't get me wrong here. I mean, just because they kiss a lot over there doesn't mean they're with it. Oh, yeah. yeah, for example, uh, over there, the uh, men don't go dancing with each other. Nah. <laughs> dancing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ken and I love dancing. Oh, I mean, yeah. you, got, uh, you got some music here? Well, sure, I guess. Uh, Susan, could we have a little something over there? Yeah, or, uh, uh, something slow, huh? <laughs> oh. A 
I'll tell you something. What more men don't do this is beyond me. Oh, yeah, it's fun. It's fun, it's good exercise. You get twice as many people to choose from, you know what I mean? Hey, uh, you know the backbender? The backbender. That's very big. Now women there, you know, they only get to do that you do. Hey, come on, how about a big, how about a twirl, big guy? Come on! There you go, round two! Oh. <laughs> You'll get used to it. I hope so. You know, then when the dancing's over, you want to get something to drink, you just gotta swoop your buddy up. Thank you! Oh, come on! <laughs> huh? Ah! <laughs> well, well, okay. Uh, this is kind of nice up here. Oh! oh. <laughs> Come on, you tough guy. Get well, okay, that's about all the time we have. Tomorrow we'll be talking with a fellow with a fascinating uh, hugging story that deals with a broken spine. So join us, will you? We'll see you then. Welcome once again to the Midnight Sermonette with your host, Pastor James Babbitt. Good evening. You know, in today's modern world, <laughs> you hear about all kinds of crazy things going on. Imported kami spring water from Poland. Braziers that open up from the front. Soap on a rope. <laughs> and abortion on demand. Now, I know what a few of you are saying. Oh, yeah, I hear what you say. Well, a pastor baby. A woman's body is wrong. Well, that's a silly remark if there ever was one. Who else's body would it be? Her neighbor's? <laughs> But what I'm concerned with is the other party in these abortions. <laughs> Someone I like to call Mr. Baby. Oh, yeah, I, I hear what you say. Well, Pastor Baby, that just what if Mr. Baby is in wanted? Well, if you can't shoot the rapids, don't get on the raft. Because I didn't tell you to have sexual intercourse in the first place, now did I? And for your information, sexual intercourse leads to Mr. Baby. As if you didn't know. Well, you say to yourself, why can't I? Why can't I have an abortion? Oh, my dear little beloved. The road to hell is paved with Waikata. Because before you know it, you are getting an abortion any old time of day you feel like it. Before cocktails, opera skiing, on your way home from the theater, any old time of day you feel like it. When you know, you really oughtn't. <laughs> now, it has been said, He who goeth into a disco and picketh up a woman and layeth with her and forgets to use something shall surely make her pregnant and he shall have to marry her. <laughs> so say it, the divine. But now, let me take a long, hard squint at this particular problem. <laughs> Did you find yourself as a child constantly getting the feeling that you were a mistake and that your parents were sorry they ever had you and did this make you realize that abortion was bad? But then, did some woman you fooled around with a couple of times have an accident and now she wants you to marry her? But 
Who would want to marry a girl who'd do something like that with a man like you in the first place? I mean, <laughs> she's not good enough for you. She's not good enough for the name. Babbitt! I mean, you know she's nothing but the naughty, dirty, tempted Jezebel. But you are so afraid that somebody in your parish is going to find out about it and you'll be thrown out for good this time. So you try to talk her into having an, an abortion. But it's no deal, Lucille, because she's read the scripture. And besides, she knows that a uh, fetus is fully formed at the age of three months. And uh, what are you going to say? Because, I mean, after all, she does kind of have a point there. And so you start pondering ways to make it look like somebody else's work, you know, like maybe uh, uh, the assistant pastor who's always taking your parking space, you know, and that fixes his little red wagon good. But they use a blood test, and then you'd be in real trouble. So you try to concentrate on your work. We spend time at the pro-abortion rally with sinful women willing to have abortions all around you. And all you can do is ask them if they know of a doctor in the Los Angeles area who can keep his mouth shut. <laughs> and then you find yourself on the TV trying to concentrate on your work. But they're so preoccupied with the thought of a little baby babbit running around that all you can do is hear the blood pounding, pounding, pounding. And then, and then there's a woman who calls the whole darn thing in the first place, come right up in front of you, in front of everyone on TV, and trying to get you to stop what you're saying, but you can't stop what you're saying, because they're a very compulsive person. Get me off! Get me off! Get me off! Get me off. Thank you for joining us on the Midnight Sermon. If there is an issue that you would like to hear Pastor Babbitt discuss, send your suggestions to Pastor James Babbitt, Midnight Sermon, Post Office Box 1630, Hollywood, California, 90028. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jimmy Buffett and the Coral Reefer Band. <laughs> I didn't know what about, but I was feeling quite disturbed. Street sweeper came a whistling by, he was bouncing every step. It seemed strange how good he felt, so I asked. self-made millionaire He never had anyone love never had no one to care He always seemed kind of sad to me and I asked him why that was and he told me it's because in my contract there's this clause that says it's my All my life writing songs and sleeping late And any manual labor I know Is purely by mistake Street sleepers can smile And I've got no right to feel upset But sometimes I still forget
And now here's a film by our own Thomas Kramer. Better pull over, honey. There's some police behind us. Oh, darn it. See if there's room on the side over there. Yeah, you're okay. I can't stop here. I'll knock over the bicycle. Well, you've got to pull over. I'll slow down. He can go around. You're supposed to stop. I know that. I'm trying. Well, wait till there's room. Good idea. He's still behind us. Maybe they just want to get through. Well, you still have to get out of their way. You think I'm trying to stall? He's a law enforcement officer. If you don't pull over, we'll get a ticket. Maybe they just want to cut us off. They had their chance. We're only going 20 miles an hour. Is it legal to park on the shoulder no, but here? pull over anyway. I'm trying. Just go 10 yards and then stop. Okay. One, two, three. Four. And don't slam on your brakes. Seven. Maybe they just want to warn us about something. Well, let's just stop and find out, okay? I don't think we'd better block anything here. Make a hard right. Are you crazy? We'll do something. You suppose this is all a coincidence? Well, let's just stop and ask him. Good idea. Well, you can't stop now. I knew I shouldn't have made that turn. You had your fingers off too much. Maybe I should ask for directions. I'm not going to tell you again. Did you catch the speed limit along here? Pull over! Now I can't find the brake. What? Never mind. They're still behind us. Are we still in front? Just park it. Let me adjust the rear view mirror first. There's some room up ahead. Did we lose them yet? Oh, great. We're both lost. Thanks I'm a lot. I'm trying oh, again. good. Are you getting hungry? Let's start. Let's pull over. Good idea. Huh? I'll find a drive through restaurant. Oh, no. Now I can't see the end of the road. But what difference does that make? It matters to me. Pull over. Are you crazy? Huh? Yes. What should I do? Just stop. Stop where? Really. No <laughs>
thinks I'm a good man. Nope. Not at all. Man, am I bummed. It says here that come moody midnight, you'll be up on the strip looking so nice it's nasty. With your cherry pie lips and your ball bearing hips and your fishnet thighs waving at the passing cars hoping to make a catch. When this John named Jack pulls up in his Cutlass Supreme, so you get in hoping to talk a little business. But those dice hanging from his mirror ain't lucky man. Cause this cat is weird. He is into melted butter and maple syrup. And you ain't nobody's pancake. So you jump out, man. But this greasy spider, he won't leave you alone. So you duck into Dobie's this old night diner. And you order a cup of joe and a BLT. Hold the mail. So you're just sitting there, man. Looking at that long-haired cook. Squeezing his sweat into the chili. <laughs> and suddenly, man... That white bread you've been eating makes a U-turn in your throat. And you begin to choke, man. Man, you're gasping for air like your lungs were two flat tires. And your eyes are popping and your ears are whistling and your face are turning blue. And you're screaming, man. You're wailing like a Culver City fire truck. But it doesn't matter, man, because no one is listening. Because you are dying a silent death because you are going to choke. Oh, sorry, man. Not choke. Toke. <laughs> yeah, toke. <clears throat> like you get some smoke and you take a little toke and it's oak. Uh, yeah, things look good. <laughs> 75 bucks. Now, Jimmy Buffett and the Coral Reefer Band. Moonlight and magnolia, starlight in your hair. All the world a dream come true. Did it really happen? Was I really there?
how nervous I am. Just kiss her. What's the big deal? He's not going to do anything. Why did I eat that Caesar salad? Maybe I should just ask her for a kiss. Nah, men don't ask. They just do it. It's too bright in here. Maybe I should turn the lights down. No, but then he might think I'm too aggressive. Men hate aggressive women. kiss on the cheek. If she likes that, the mouth is only two inches away. Should I kiss him? No. Now men hate aggressive women. <laughs> Why is, Why it is such there such torture? torture? I'll do Please, it and get it over with. do it and get it over with. I can't believe it. This is terrific. <laughs> hey, she's a good kisser. Maybe I'm a good kisser. Why do I have to give her all the credit? I can't believe it. This is terrific. Hey, he's a good kisser. Maybe I'm a good kisser. Why do I have to give him all the credit? Okay, enough with the mouth. Oh my God, an earring? I better get back to her mouth. I might rip her lobe off or something. Why did I have to wear these stupid earrings? Maybe I should take my glasses off. Nah, it's too soon. I wish he'd take his glasses off. They're hurting my nose. I'll go for a breast. Oh, she'll kill me. I have to get her more excited. Well, how can I get her more excited if I don't touch her there? <laughs> it's the catch-22 of excitement. Why isn't he touching my breast? What's the matter with this guy? Maybe he doesn't like them. Nah, all guys like them. Maybe I should touch her back before I go for the front. Nah, I gotta take a shot at the front. I can't just kiss her for the next half hour. I gotta get the breast. But how? I got it. I'll use my elbow. Is that an elbow? Oh, my God. She knows about the elbow. What am I going to do? The top button. If I get a button, I'm home. I got it. <laughs> I'm cooking. He's going to open my bra soon. Oh, my God. It opens from the front. I'll never get it open. Uh. A moan. She must like me. How can she like me? I'm so boring. I really like this guy. 
Women never tell you they like you. You always have to guess. I'll tell her I like her. I, I like you. Oh my God, she didn't say anything. She doesn't like me. I can't believe I said that either. I'm so stupid. Why didn't I say anything? I should have said I like him too, but... Well, then he would have thought I said it just because he said it and that I didn't really mean it. Well, she's really starting to fade. She doesn't like me, and I don't blame her. Why should she like me? After what I did with my elbow, she probably hates my guts. Why didn't I say I liked him? He's such a nice guy. Even after what he did with his elbow. Wait a minute. Who does she think she is? I'm good company. My face is starting to clear up. What's not to like? Wait a minute. Why should I tell him I like him anyway? I just met the guy. How dare he pressure me like that? Well, look, oh. it's getting kind of late. Yes, it's getting a little late. Yeah, it is. Um, uh, boy, I really had a nice I time. I had a real I nice, had a nice time. Nice time tonight myself. I really did. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I'll, I'll see you. Yeah, call, call me up, okay? That would be good if you, you know, call me up soon and yeah. all. Okay. See ya. Okay. See ya. for just a few moments. We want to thank our special guest star, Mark Hamill. Thank you, Mark, for being with us. Hey, I had a real nice time being guest host. Listen, let me tell you one thing about the staff, cast, and crew of fight. They got the force coming out of their ears here. We also want to thank Jimmy Buffett and the Reefer Band for being with us this evening. And until then, go out and kiss a tree. Good night now.